my since my uh, channel is mostly about building patterns, um, say you have a customer come in, gives you a drawing about like that. There's not much information there. Uh, some things are missing, so you have to ask him some questions about his drawing. He just came in and handed you this, so he needs casting for it. So some of the questions you might need to ask him is, first is about finish. What areas are machined? Most drawings will have areas marked off. You can assume all the holes in this thing are machined, but some faces may need to be machined, so you need to ask him about that. Also dimensions, uh, if there's any missing dimensions, in this case there is because it's not a complete drawing. So you need to ask them about missing dimensions and where is it critical. Do you want the draft to be two dimension plus, fin or plus draft or two dimension minus draft? It's going to make a difference, um, especially in this area right here. You can see it's a uh, 35 millimeter radius. So if the is it 35 millimeters up here at the top, or is it the bottom? Is there going to be an interference problem? And lastly, since the customer didn't draw any fillets on this thing, you're going to have to inform them of fillets that need to be every place there's a sharp inside corner and a radius on sharp outside corners. So you need all that information from the customer. It's best to do it before you start building. So once you got all that information, this drawing here is a markup of what I'm talking about. All the areas in this case, because it's a made up part. Um, all the areas marked in red are going to be machined. Holes are machined through, so they will be filled solid. Dimensions, including uh, draft, plus or minus draft from dimension, are marked. Uh, there was a few missing dimensions on this because, like I say, it's just something I picked up off the internet to use them as, as an example. So, now you got all the information you need. And it was given to you by the customer and you'll have him sign off on it. Next thing you got to do is decide how you're going to mold it. First thought would be right here, right about there, put a parting line right here. Split it right down through the center of this. So you'd have a cross section like that because this this uh, rib here is on the parting line. So your parting line would go through like that. But in talking to them, that won't work because this face here is machined. You're going to have to add draft from here to here and from here to here on this thing. Which means instead of a nice looking little boss like he's got drawn, he's going to end up with a spot face there. Because that area will be filled in because you can't draw it. You'll have to fill this area in. If that's acceptable, it would work for him. Um, but in this case, we're going to assume he said no, he wants it as close to the part as we can get it. So second thought would be second thought is right here. So we put the parting line right here. This will all be in the drag. Uh, we put that we can get everything on there the way he wants and we will add a core box or core print here to uh, take care of this area underneath here. All that will be in core. So we'll have one pattern, one core box, and your bid is based on what you see here. And then we'll get into building this thing. So we've got fillets, everything we need, so then we do a quick little layout. I didn't do a layout on this one. I just uh, started with the major component first. That would be the, the bottom flange. Yeah, I guess you can see it. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay. So here, here's the bottom flange. Um, you can see I got double lines here. This first one was a mistake. That's where you measure twice, cut once. So since I haven't cut it out yet, I measured it again, double checked it. So I start here, get all my center lines located. This will be my starting point. 
my XYZ axis is right here in the center of this at the parting line. So I got three major components made, or not made, just laid out. Next major component would be the center boss. This goes here. And for the sake of argument, because of a piece of wood, we're going to say that the dimension at the top is smaller than the dimension at the bottom. We're going to assume he wanted that minus straff. So actual dimension will be at the bottom of the part. This top will be slightly smaller. goes here. Second part is the end. Um, let's see if I can get this in there. And yeah, not really. Second part is the end. It goes right in here. It's laid out like so. From this center line here to this center line will be accurate dimension once everything is sanded down. That's my starting plane. Everything starts from this view. And let's get into making this thing. We'll get out to the shop and start building. Okay, for this I'd normally use a bandsaw, but it's, it's kind of indisposed right now, so uh, just a simple scroll saw works fine for a small part like this. So let's get this thing done. Okay, so this is me using the spinner that I made for this particular sander. It's a double-ended grizzly sander, 12-inch diameter. And uh, you'll see the, the reason I use a double-ender um, in a, probably a future video. It works just as well if you have a reversing sander in the neighborhood of the 20-inch one. Okay, pieces are cut, got the major components done. Let's get this thing glued together. First, we'll get some of this stuff out of the way. So we've already verified center line locations, made sure everything fit upright. So now we'll glue the first two major components together, making sure the center lines are completely lined up. Okay, that looks good. Now we'll let it set for a few minutes to make sure it won't move. Okay, so let's get this thing assembled and see what it looks like all finished.
Okay, all the pieces are glued together. The glue is set, and now it's time for fillets. Uh, I usually start with the vertical fillets first, get all those done, and then just sweep around the perimeter where I need it, and it all goes together real easy that way. Okay, fillets are about done. Now we got the sanding work to do. Okay, fillets are complete. Let's see what we can do from here on out. It looks like finish work. Here's a, here's a basic pattern. It's done. Got to finish on it. Core print uh, fits right underneath there. It's got the complete shape of everything I need in there. So this would be in here and attached to this. So it is now looking like that. The only thing I have to decide now is the open face of the core box. So core box is going to look like this. This is a pattern side. So I can make this the open face. Either way there's going to be loose pieces. Or I could make this at the parting line the open face. And fill it from either either way I want to fill it. So I'm going to have to make a loose piece for the core box itself. And still looking at it. I mean it could be done either way. I'm not sure which way I want to go yet. So that's it. So you got the pattern, core print. Got to make the core box yet. Okay, so I had said earlier that we need to make a core box for this thing. Um, core print is here, right there. And taking this thing apart, we need a core box to make that core. So I got a partial core box done. I was going to show you how I did it. Um, let's see. Here's the core box without the sides, so you can see how I went about it somewhat. This is a loose piece, comes out. And to make it, what I did is this is just a bondo, bondoed on there. I got a block of wood glued underneath this thing to give it some strength and support. So, what I did is I Basically, squeeze Bondo in, got this thing in like this. This was oversized, I cut it down to size after the fact. So, I got that done, and I took both these pieces, did the same thing here. I put a block underneath here to give it some strength, and then I squeezed both of these into here. So now this is the shape of the core. So when I pull this apart, like so, got to make sure I'm in there. So when I pull this apart like this, the core, you know, it'll drop out and be on the ground like this, and I can pull the loose piece off. Then the core print will go into the mold, and you'll have the core print. It'll fit into the cavity where the core print goes or was. So. Core box is about like so. Loose piece goes in, takes up the 
black if you can uh, if it'll focus in there maybe anyway got the fillet in the bottom where the two pieces of the casting join together for this boss and this boss uh, this is the open face here which is the same as this face so everything is ready to go so I guess that's uh, about the end of this video so that's it uh, if you have any questions go ahead and uh, leave a comment give it a like if you like the video and we'll take it from there and we'll go into other stuff later to get this thing finished up and a casting made talk to you later bye